Hi, Photo Fisher here. I just received my new Grainfather all-in-one brewing system. And I'm brewing a, a Belgian triple using some excess grains I've had from previous batches. So I've got it all set up and I've started uh, pre-boiling my mash water to get it up to a mash temp of about 155 so it should be ringing any second you can see right there it's at 154 it might be tough to see because we're in the daylight here but a couple things I noticed right away is when I plugged it in the pump worked but the heating element didn't work and I checked all my connections and I noticed at the bottom center of the unit so underneath here up where the heating element rests below uh, the inner surface, there's a little reset button. So yours might be flipped the first time you get it. Just press that and all of a sudden the heating element takes off. Another thing I've done to speed up the uh, mash water boil time, or heat up time I should say, is I turn the circulation pump on. So I'm circulating that water uh, so the cold water just doesn't sit on top and the bottom water heats up. So I've got a thorough mash temp. I'm targeting 155, putting in grains that are about 80 degrees right now. Should take me down to 145, which is my first protein rest step for about uh, 20 minutes for the recipe that I'm uh, brewing. So there's a couple thoughts right there that you may want to think about when you first start up with your grain father. Okay, I've reached my mash strike temperature. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll turn off the pump. I don't need to recirculate that anymore. And remove the circulation arm. It's really handy that uh, the Greenfather engineers put on the secondary stop valve on this design that uh, got shipped to the US. I've seen some other designs on the internet that don't have this secondary uh, stop valve. Uh, so I don't necessarily need to turn the, uh, the water valve off completely, but I will. Maybe it's tough to see in this video, but the simple ball valve to switch that off. I'll insert the integrated mesh ton into the water. I can hear the heating element continue to keep the water. It's at about 154, so cooled down one one degree since I've done uh, took the lid off and uh, put in this mesh ton. I'll put in the uh, recirculation arm extender. And I'll put in this little plug that they include, uh, which stops the grains from going down in here as we apply the grains into the strike water. Pretty simple that way. I'm only doing a four gallon test batch today. So my grain bill is around uh, 10 pounds of grain and I'm throwing in some DME dried malt extract uh, just to add a little extra sugar boost to the whole wort and to use up some excess materials I have. This is sort of a, a junkyard batch today, kind of using up some excess materials. Alright, I've just got done stirring in all of the uh, grains for the, uh, the mash portion of the, of the brewing day process and I found that these uh, little uh, distilling top uh, hooks that aren't used for any of the purposes that we use for just regular beer brewing turn out to be a really good um, little holder for my uh, mash tun uh, stir stick here so it's right there ready to go when I need it next alright I'm ready to install the mash tun top plate and the recirculation arm I think the two most important reasons I decided to cut the check for one of these uh, units is one to be able to control the exact temperature of my mash as I like to do step mashing uh, programs and secondly the recirculation arm uh, really aids in um, building up the efficiency of your little system. We'll remove the grain stopper and get ready to push this in. I found it's easy to wet the unit before we put it all in. That way, see how this, if you don't wet it, the silicone seal wants to pop off. So I'll go wet this and it should slide in much easier. 
once you wet it and slide it in a little bit sideways until it reaches the top of your grain bed and just tap it down so it lays flat on top of it. You can see some of the grain mash coming through now. There, it's installed and the silicon seal is straight up. Next thing I'll do is I'll install this handy little device which controls the level of water and mash on top of the grain bed All right, until it goes straight down and sits inside the uh, the hole within your top mash tun grain bed filter. Now I'll install the recirculation arm and make sure that you can put the lid on here. I almost forgot that step. So you just put this through the lid, put the lid on. Tighten that down. Just hand tighten. No need to go any further. There we go. I'm going to turn my uh, ball valve to the on position. And I'm going to start the pump. So the settings that I use for uh, putting this in mash is the pump on. Put this switch over to the mash position. I've set my temperature step at 147 for this uh, first step. And then down here, this little rocker I've put in the mash position. So it uses less wattage uh, to keep the water hot since I've reached the strike temperature. Here you can see the wort is recirculating nicely and that fun little gadget that sits on top of the center tube sits about, uh, about two inches above the top mesh green bed plate and allows about uh, two inches of recirculated wort uh, to sit and drain through, that, uh, uh, through the mesh itself. So we're just at the beginning of mesh in and the wort is certainly cloudy, I expect that to clear up as we go along. Well here we are just about at the end of our uh, mash period. You can see the wort is much clearer. Might be tough to see here but I can see the bottom grate and the wort is cleared up significantly. So we'll go on to the next step of mash out. Now we're ready for mash out. I'll switch the pump off turn this to boil. I've already turned the bottom element uh, to normal. I'll turn this off just for safe, safety purposes. Take off the circulating arm. This lid can be kind of kind of warm so I'm going to handle it quickly. All right and we'll take the green bed out next. Next we'll want to take out a little overflow piece. It's hot so I tend to want to take it out uh, with a pair of pliers make it easy to handle so you won't burn yourself. The edges of the handle will catch on the little rest arms. Ten pounds of grain plus liquid gets pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. Sparging is pretty easy. You don't want more than maybe a quarter of an inch or a couple uh, millimeters of depth of water sitting on top of your mesh uh, grain bed plate. Just allow that to sparge out. Sparge water draining through the grain bed at mash out here and we're just about done with uh, the sparge gravity drain and this should just reduce to a trickle here in a few minutes. I've just removed the uh, grain bed cylinder revealing a really nice frothy wart 
and I set the grain bed cylinder on a stainless steel pot just to get any extra drippings out of that mash and if I have enough I'll pour that back into the wort as I go through the boil cycle. Now it's time to add my first hop addition and any time that I can prevent hops from getting into the wort loosely I try to do so so I really like a, a hop rocket or a hop sock in this case so I have a hop sock full of my first addition and I've just strung it through the hole in the lid and just put a plastic cup here just as a stopper to prevent that from going too deep into the boil kettle. I'd be remiss to say that while you're brewing, enjoy a brew from your last batch. It just brings you really good karma, especially if that last batch is delicious, like this blackberry brown ale that I made last fall. I'm at the end of my boil, and I've hooked up the counterflow wort chiller, and I've hooked the recirculating pipe up to the intake the wort chiller. I did want to say earlier when you hook up the recirculating arm don't tighten it too tight because as that wort heats up during your boil process it expands both the plastic and the metals and if you've hand tightened it too tight you'll find that you'll need a wrench to get that untightened so just hand tighten uh, modestly it will be just fine for any hookups that go to the recirculating pipe. We've got that hooked up, and I've hooked up my water from a garden hose, and you can see I've put a uh, pipe a hose clamp there. Um, I've noticed that the blue hose fits on the barb nicely, but with any water pressure at all, that blue hose will squirt off. So nothing that a uh, hose clamp can't fix. So we've got our water intake. I've got it flowing just ever so slightly and I'm watering the lawn at the same time. You don't need to have this flow fast, just have it flow gently, you're not only conserving water, but you're also maximizing the heat absorption of the water that flows through the inside copper pipe. I've sanitized my fermentation bucket, I also have some glass carboys that I use, but they're in use right now. So this batch, since it's only about a four gallon batch, I'm gonna put it into a sanitized bucket. I've got kept the lid on just to make sure that we keep it as clean as possible. While I get prepared, I've dipped the end of the outtake hose, which goes into the fermentation bucket. I put that into some sanitizing solution until I'm ready to get things going. All right. Our chilled wort outflow hose. Put that inside the sanitized fermentation bucket. We'll turn this on. I've already got the water flowing through here, and I've kind of pre chilled it. Uh, it's a warm day here in Colorado, it's about 90 degrees, so this black plastic external uh, surface has heated up the internal copper pipe. Uh, pretty warm so I chilled it down I can feel it cool by running cool water through it for about five minutes and I'm ready to start my pump do my counterflow. You can see that the work is now starting to circulate through. It should be shooting out here in just a second. I had to kick the flow up just a little bit because it was flowing too low or too slow rather, and not chilling the wort down to a proper temperature. So adjust that flow either by the hose coming out uh, from your water source, or you can also slow down the flow of the wort going into the chiller by restricting it just ever so slightly. 
and I can hear the pump now starting to drain the last few ounces of wort from the from the boil kettle. And it took all of maybe five minutes most to drain this so that four gallons comes into my fermentation bucket. Okay, so that's pretty quick. I can see where it's, it's stagnant here now. So I'll stop the pump and uh, wrap this up and start my cleaning process. Well, there we go. I just transferred the wort to the fermentation vessel and it's all sealed up and ready to go. And I've taken the counterflow wort chiller off of the unit in preparation for cleaning it here in a few minutes. And I've turned the unit off. I just wanted you to see the trube and the excess hops that are laying at the bottom of the unit. There's about uh, one and a half centimeters, maybe half an inch of uh, wart left over. So this job, uh, this unit does a very good job uh, filtering out and not wasting uh, much wart. The Grainfather electric brewing system uh, is uh, one price you get all. There's nothing extra to buy, no extra parts. In fact, it comes with a small parts bag uh, for extra seals and uh, hose and water fittings for various faucets and hoses and water outlets that you may encounter. I uh, really like the feeling of not having to be nickel and dime to death with uh, a bunch of extra parts or things that I'll need to make the system work. It's all in one and uh, it's one price and that's really good. At the end of your brew, um, after you've sprayed out the uh, brew kettle with a hose, you might notice a little bit of um, burnt wort down at the bottom there. This wipes up pretty easily with just a sponge, so you don't need any harsh chemicals or scrubbing devices to get that cleaned up. I also have a spray nozzle, sorry for the shadow there spray nozzle on the end of my hose which gives me a little extra PSI pressure uh, to spray out the boil kettle. You'll want to get in here and get this clean as well. All right, So maybe a toothbrush or um, a high powered washer will get that clean. When you're done cleaning the bottom just reach in, pull this out and clean this by hand in the kitchen sink. Here's another tip that I can offer you. Those spent grains and hops, just throw them in your garden. Makes great fertilizer. It helps break up the soil uh, year over year. Adds nutrients to the soil and bacteria. Um, just really helps your soil pH levels as well. Or, sometimes we take some of those spent grains, add a bunch of really cheap peanut butter to it, bake it on a sheet, and turn them into dog treats. Dogs love spent grains with peanut butter. Uh, there's a brew day with the Grainfather all-in-one electric brewing system, the US version, and I've offered some of my tips along the way. Hopefully it'll help you brew better beer with yours too.